What's going on guys? Today we're having a tackle talk about three of the most effective methods for surf fishing. My first favorite method, light tackle. Little spoons and stuff like this on light line, small reel, small rod on the surf. A lot of fun. Method two. Ah, I just hooked myself. Method two, bait fishing using hook and sinker. And method three, plugging. All right, so I've got boxes for each kind of these, um, each kind of fishing that I was talking about. I've got my light tackle box with like little spoons and stuff like that in there. I love these little spoons. Um, I've got my bait fishing box, which I've got all my sinkers, all my hooks, leader line, pre-tied rigs that I've tied. Um, yeah, lots of different stuff for bait fishing. And then I've got one of my many plugging boxes right here, full of different metal, full of different plugs, top water, metal lift divers, lots of different kinds of uh, plugs in here. And I have them in all separate boxes because I consider them as different kinds of fishing. I don't usually bring all three with me to the beach because if I'm focusing on one kind of fishing, I like to focus on one kind of fishing. The first method I'm talking about today is like light tackle spoons. So I know Castmaster makes a bunch of these kinds of spoons, all different sizes. Uh, I usually get half ounce, quarter ounce, one ounce, um, but that's if I'm targeting little dinner sized fish uh, from the first trough. I recommend anyone start with a half ounce to one ounce little spoon like this. Now spoons like this catch all sorts of fish, I'm telling you guys, all sorts of fish. Um, when I cast this out, I usually have no idea what I'm going to hook up with. And that's really cool to me that, that you know, casting out the mystery of, of not knowing what you're going to catch. That's what really draws me to the sport of fishing in general. Um, so I think that these are really, really versatile. Uh, they work all over. They work everywhere. I've caught fish on spoons everywhere I've been. Um, and I really, really like them. And now the trick with using, now the trick with using these little spoons like this mm -hmm. is to make sure you have the correct gear. You're not going to be able to cast this little spoon out on something like on something like this or something big like this. These are just too big. You won't be able to get your your line out far enough. What I recommend you guys use for these spoons, um, these light tackle, is a saltwater approved. Uh, lighter reel. And I just ordered myself a reel that would be perfect for this. Cast King. This is the Kodiak. This handle is what I really like about it. Now let me show you why. Alright, look at that. Perfect. Not too big. Not too small. This would be a very versatile reel for me. Um, I will be able to use this on the pier, I'll be able to use this on the surf, uh, I'll be able to use this on the jetty, um, brackish water, fresh water, it's salt water approved, good size. Now the part I like about the, no the, the handle is the knob right here. When you order the 5000 size, instead of getting like the standard like, instead of getting that little standard knobby knob like this, you get a nice handful with this, look at that. And this allows for a, a nice grip on your reel, so you don't feel like your fingers are going to slip out if you happen to land a, if you happen to catch a big fish. Um, it's perfect, and it's not so big that you won't be able to cast something like this out. So long as you have the right diameter braid, um, you will be fine. For this kind of fishing, I recommend you spool this up with like probably 10 pound braid. Braid is a really sensitive line. It has no stretch, so you're able to feel every little touch. Um, and I think that's important when you have a uh, light tackle like this, so you can really be able to uh, set the hook on them good. Now I'm gonna show you a really quick trick with uh, spooling up braid. It's gonna save you a little bit of money, and I think a lot of people will benefit from this tip. Here it is, you ready? You don't need to spool this whole spool up with braid. If you don't have anything but braid on here, it's gonna start slipping. It's gonna start slipping, and maybe some of you have had this problem before, where like the drag is completely locked, but you pull it, and it's still spinning. Why is that? 
because braid can't grip onto this. What you need to do is put monofilament backing on it. Think about how big your spool is. Are you really gonna be casting 300 yards of braid? I don't think you can cast 300 yards of braid. And if you can, props to you, man. But I can't cast 300 pounds of braid. So what I usually do is I put mono backing on here and then probably 150 yards of braid. This way you save a bunch of braid. This way you save a bunch of braid and your line won't slip. So I'm gonna show you real quick. So I'll fill the spool about a quarter of the way. And I've got 20 pound mono backing right now. Yeah, and this, the casting braid has been working for me pretty well. And they're like $10 cheaper than like the, the standard braid that I usually get. Power Pro, Spider Wire. It's usually $10 more expensive. Cast King does the same job and they give you more of it. So the line that I've been using is this Cast King braided line made in the USA. Spectra fiber and it comes on this awesome biodegradable spool, which I think is a really good effort in helping with water conservation, ocean conservation, because plastic is really ruining our oceans. Aaron and I have been talking to you guys about this for a while now, how we should all be picking up our trash, we should be leaving our spots cleaner than when we first arrived, and I think this fits in so perfectly because at least they're putting effort into minimizing waste. You use the spool one time and then you throw it away, and then that plastic lives on Earth for a long time. That doesn't make sense to me. Why create that? Plastic is bad for the world. Thank you, Casking, for making something like this. And I'm using a uni to uni knot to attach the braid to my mono. If anyone wants a tutorial, if anybody's interested in a tutorial on how to tie a uni to uni knot, um, let me know in the comments below. I'll make one the second I hear one person tell me they need help with that. And then I fill the rest up with braid. Anybody interested in the Cast King braid with a biodegradable spool or the Kodiak 5000? We've got links in the description below. All right, and it's ready to go. This is gonna be awesome. Our next method, method number two, bait fishing. There are so many different rigs that you can tie, all with the basic idea. This rig is one of my favorite rigs. You guys may have seen us talk about this rig before. It's the same rig in the Senko Skipper Surf Fishing Kit that we provide you all the things to tie and how to tie this rig um, in our Senko Skipper Kit. We've got a PDF if you want to read it, all in the link in the description below. But this rig is a very versatile rig. You don't have to have one hook, you can have two hooks. You can have three hooks if you wanted to have three hooks. Um, with this, it keeps the bait off the ground. Whereas a fish finder rig, the hook, the the hook is on the ground, is on the ocean floor. Since it's off the bottom, I get less catfish, I get less skate, I get less, you know, like the bottom feeding fish. Um, especially I get a lot of hookups on the top hook, far from the bottom. Um, anyways, I like to rig this up. Lately, I've been liking to rig this up with the super salty tentacles. This is the mixed bag that we have. I'm gonna show you this real quick. The mixed bags come with squid chunks made from the body and squid tentacles made from the tentacles of the squid um, and it comes with a bunch of salt with it to keep it preserved so it comes with a bunch of this uh, salt but the salt is a good thing it helps keep it preserved and it also is infused with a lot of squid scent all that squid juice is in the salt and it keeps it smelling like fresh squid love it so here are the body parts Here are the tentacles. Everyone gets tentacles in the mixed bag. Body, 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 body. All right, so for this, I wanna show you guys something. I want you guys to try this yourself. Um, get the tentacles. Cut off a bit, all right? And then you're gonna feed it onto your hook like a worm, like this. And I'm using circle hooks because those are safer for fish. All right, look at that. Hook it up like this. Get the tentacles, put it on here. Now for, for bigger hooks, either use a big tentacle or use a chunk bait like this. And with these bodies, 
they've got a lot of meat on them and they stay on there forever there you go look at that perfect in combination with like fresh cut bunker or like blood worms um, this is a nice chunk bait to add on or by itself look at that so now when this is sitting when this is in the water the surf okay waves and current will be pushing it back and forth and swishing doesn't that look like a fish to you it smells great moves very naturally um, other baits I would use on this uh, blood worms uh, cut bunker mm, chunk bait any kind of dead bait dead fish cut dead fish lots of stuff works on on these hooks right here but yeah for these hooks you can put whatever kind of chunk bait you want on them you cast it out you sit there you wait for the tug um, I really like this kind of fishing especially if I'm going with family or friends and I don't want to pay full attention to fishing I can have this out have a bell up have my drag set so I can really just chill lay back and I don't have to be super focused which brings me to my next method plugging this is like a candy store for me like this all looks like candy to me I freaking love them one they're really beautiful they're really fun um, they're really beautiful aren't they this one was actually made by a subscriber Linnell thank you man I still have not gotten a chance to use it um, we're preparing for our trip to Cape Cod soon and uh, I think that these will work really well Linnell thank you mm -hmm. very much um, these are metal lip divers metal lip divers stay subsurface they're not on the top but they're just below it and they'll dive like this this works really well for lots of different kinds of fish, especially big predator fish, uh, rockfish, striped bass. Um, now, the thing is, these are made of wood, and I don't want to fish for this for 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 bluefish because it'll ruin my paint. Um, just a personal preference. I would rather not use such a beautiful lure on a toothy fish like that. For toothy fish, I use plastic stuff like this or I don't know if it's plastic whatever material this is but it can get beaten up and I don't care this is a tsunami one of the tsunami talking poppers um, not too expensive really fun to use the thing with top water and plugs like this is these are probably two three ounces you know like they're not they're not light things you would not want to use light tackle to be throwing something like this what I recommend for um, top water plugs like this, like big ones like this on the surf, is a long rod, 10 to 11 feet, 10, 11 foot rod will be good, um, with a big reel with heavier braid. So I'm thinking like 30, 40 pound braid. 20 pound braid will work, but I'm afraid of cut slicing my finger on that braid. And the Cast King braid will work perfectly for this. I highly recommend you use braid when you're casting plugs like this because um, you want it to go really far. That's one of the reasons why it's so big and heavy. You want it to go re really far and cover a lot of water. When you're working these baits on the top, you want to cover as much of that water column as possible. And this is making a bunch of noise at the surface of the water, splashing around, and boom! All of a sudden something will come out of the water and eat it. And it's so exciting to see it because it's boom and then it's a train on you. And it's a train on the end of your rod. It's awesome. You're going to see more of that in the future. Because we're going to Cape Cod soon. <laughs> so when you, fish, when you fish something like this, there's a lot of different ways to fish it. This will fish way different than this. Look at how it's shaped. This will float and pop water from the mouth. This one more, more so glides through the water. So, but for something like this, a popper, what you're gonna wanna do is cast it way out there and start popping, bringing it back, okay? There's many different ways, many different speeds you can bring it back. That's something that you need to work on yourself. It depends on what the fish want. Sometimes you cast it out, pop, 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 wait, pop, 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 wait, pop, pop, pop. Sometimes they want fast, pop, 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 pop. You know, it's, there's, there's different retrieval ways and you gotta experiment with different ways. So final tips for these, get yourself the correct rod, okay? 
10, 11 foot, a 10, 11 foot rod with the right reel and the right braid. Throw these when you see fish busting on the surface, you see birds diving like crazy. Throw these when you see fish coming out of the water, you see fish chasing other little bait fish. Throw one of these. It'll really attract it with all that sound, with all that splashing, it'll come up and smack it hard. Have fun. Thank you everyone for listening to me ramble on about surf fishing. I really hope that I can help anyone out there who needs help because I remember a time where I didn't know anything. I didn't know much about fishing and it was kind of hard for me to find out the information. We want to be the source of your help. Anybody who needs help, please reach out to us. We're willing to help. If you guys have any more questions and you need more answers, we've got a detailed guide as well as the kit that comes with all the stuff to tie the, the bait fishing rig I was talking about. This is something that I wrote personally, myself, to answer a lot of questions that we've been getting. And it's just chock full of information, how to tie the rigs. It comes with the, with the gear to tie the rigs as well. Um, if you're going to the beach for a week or two, pick yourself up some good stuff. Have a good time. Good luck out there, guys. I know you can do it. If you get to the beach and you get skunked the first day, do not get discouraged. That happens to me on the reg. I'm not even kidding. We're filming our show, and the first day we get there, almost every time, we get skunked, or we only catch one little fish. It's about experimenting and learning. Remember, guys, don't get discouraged. Remember how the ocean makes you feel. And try and remember that when you're there, and not get too frustrated with yourself if you cannot catch fish. See you guys.